Hey, welcome back. If you own a power washing business and you are trying to grow and scale it, then you are in the right place. Now, today what I wanna talk about is three ways that you can generate leads for free for your power washing company without having to spend any money. So we're gonna go over all three. Now, before we do that, um, you know, who does this work for? Work for? Well, first things first, you know, if you're brand new, it's likely you don't have a bunch of capital to spend on marketing or, you know, trying to hire an agency or doing any paid marketing strategies. So you have to get a little resourceful and think outside the box to actually generate leads for your company, right? But if you've been in business for a while, you probably know that this this industry is seasonal. So, you know, at different times of year, people are more interested in actually getting the services done. And when you're in those slow times, you might want to market more, which is great. You should always be marketing, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend a bunch of money in a time where people aren't really, you know, looking to have that done. So even if you have been running a company for a while, having a way to generate some free leads is great during those down times. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, the first way is social media. And obviously you can run social media ads, right? You can run ads on Facebook, TikTok, you can run ads on any social media platform. That is how they make their money, right? And those do work, but it does cost a little bit of money to get started with that. And typically to find some winning campaigns, you have to do testing. So it takes a little bit of upfront investment, but you can also build an audience on social media. And with Facebook, you can build a business page and you can invite your Facebook friends to that business page and build a following on there. And the, the real key to this that I have found is when you're building a following on your social media for your power washing business, you want to uh, make sure that you are not just always asking for a sale, right? I tried this in the beginning and we would never get a response. What I figured out is that what we should have been doing is instead providing value, 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 and then asking every once in a while. Um, if you ever pay attention when you are scrolling through social media, they typically show you like three or four organic posts and then an ad. So even with them, you know, they're, they're playing the same game, right? But they're, they're giving, 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 and then asking by showing an ad. Obviously it's not them asking specifically, but it's just part of their algorithm for the give to ask ratio, as they call it. If you know who Gary Vee is, he talks about uh, jab, 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 right hook, meaning give, 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 ask, right? So you want to keep a cadence of providing a lot of value. Now that can be, you know, difficult to do, right? Like what the heck is there to talk about? How do you provide value? Well, if you think about it, you can position your power washing company as a maintenance company for a home, right? That That is like what you help people do. You help them maintain their home. And if you think about it that way, there's countless things that you can talk about and provide value, right? Simple checklists for, you know, different times of year and maintaining your home. You know, what um, What are the biggest threats to your house in the heat of the summer? Just different things like that. They don't even really have to be relevant to power washing specifically, but more so the broader topic of home maintenance, right? So doing things like that and just providing value is a great way to have an audience that is engaged and keeping them engaged. Now, how do you grow an audience on social media? Obviously, you can invite people, ask people to come, ask customers, friends, family to invite people as well. But something that we found that worked very well is to do a giveaway. And before you do a giveaway, you know, check the legalities in your jurisdiction. But with a giveaway, we were able to give away a service and how we did that is we would have people, you know, tag people below. And by doing that, it would grow our audience. So we would do a free service, but we grew our audience on Facebook, right? So that's a great tactic for trying to grow your group. Another one that I once heard um, was a giveaway campaign where you're basically partnering with local companies, um, you know, call it a local flower shop or a local steakhouse or someone like that. And on Facebook, you're basically doing a campaign where you're giving away a gift card to the steakhouse or you know a free bouquet to the flower shop. And what this does is it allows you to not only give them additional reach by tagging them and showing them in front of your audience, but when you tag them, it will also show it to their audience and they can promote the same thing. So all of these things can 
add people to your audience and help grow your audience so that you have a social media following. And once you have that, as long as you nurture it and provide real value, you can begin to actually grow that and get leads from it, right? And it's free. It does take time and work, but it's free. So if you, and that is one thing I do want to note before we jump into the next thing, typically to market, you know, you either have more time available or you have more money. So if you have more time available, that's, you know, use your time to market and generate leads. If you have more money available and you probably have less time at that point, use the, use the money you have to, you know, put it out into the world, use that leverage and generate leads with paid strategies. Now let's jump into the next one. The next one is partnerships. And I've heard this called a lot of different things, um, joint venture, affiliates, partnerships, whatever. It's where you partner with another company and you push business to each other. It's different from a referral because a referral is where like your customer refers your company to their friends, family, people they know, right? Whereas an affiliate or a partnership or a joint venture is where two companies are pushing customers back and forth. And the best way that this works is to find someone that serves a similar client demographic, but offers non-competing services. So one example of this that we had in our company was a maid service. This maid service cleaned everything on the inside of the house and we could take care of everything on the outside of the house. So it was a perfect relationship where we both benefited. We could send them customers and they could send us customers. And the best part, it was free to both of us and we both benefited from it. So talking to local businesses and you know, in your area that you can partner with to send leads back and forth and have that, you know, re relationship that is beneficial to both parties is a great strategy for getting leads. And then the last one I want to talk about is outbound. Outbound is not what people want to hear, right? You know, it's DMing people, texting people, calling people, knocking on doors. It's not fun, but here's the deal. If you provide something that people need and want and you know that you are the best option to fill that you know problem that they have solve that problem then you know there is nothing wrong with going out to people and talking to them about what you can do for them or how you can solve your problems and the best part is that stuff is free going door to door takes time it sucks sometimes because you know just it's not always fun but it can generate leads and it's free right um you know cold calling businesses if there are properties that you've seen that are dirty, cold calling them. Yeah, they might say no on the first time, but typically speaking, you know, if it's a dirty building and it is a business, they need to keep their their own image up for, you know, their customers. So follow up again, follow up again. You know, it might be no right now, but maybe it's yes in six months. Um, and same with door to door. Like you can go through the same neighborhood multiple times. Someone might say no right now, or they might not be home, but the next time you stop by, they may be ready to buy. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that there, but you know what I mean. So um, those are the three ways, right? And there's a lot of ways. And truthfully, in the beginning, and really just all of entrepreneurship is a lot of just being resourceful, right? Like if, you, <laughs> if you're trying to grow something, a lot of times you don't have a bunch of resources at your disposal, so you have to learn to be resourceful. And when you need to generate leads without spending a bunch of money to do it, you just got to be resourceful. And I will also say, you know, if you really figure out a marketing strategy, you can almost not have a marketing budget because if you figure out a good marketing strategy and you can get people in and, you know, generate leads and close them and make money, you know, you could put money on a credit card. I'm not telling you to do this, nor am I a financial advisor, but you could put money on a credit card and, you know, to run ads or to do whatever you need to in a paid advertising strategy and have the ability to get leads, close those leads and make the money before you have to pay off that card. See what I mean? So with a good marketing strategy, you can also run paid ads. But in the beginning, a lot of times, you know, you're still figuring that out. So that's where some of these paid strategies really come into play. And again, to recap, you know, it was building a social media audience on multiple platforms if you can, because different people hang out on different platforms, getting into partnerships with other local businesses that offer non-competing services, but serve similar clients, right? And then doing outbound, whether it's phone calls, door to door, whatever that may be. All of those are free. They do take time and work, but they are completely free for you to do and they all work. So 
Um, do remember that all of this comes down to how you do it, not what you're doing. So the important piece is how you're actually, you know, talking to people when you're going outbound, how you're building the audience, what you're providing to the audience. It's, it's all about the little nuances. So go really deep on those and learn those and it will come back to you tenfold. So I hope this was super helpful. Um, if it was, please subscribe because we'll be dropping more videos. And as always, we got a link below for you. Check that out. Um, promise you will not regret it, but we will see you in the next one.